Daniel dies damn sword. So I got his sword, okay? And they go, what's its name? The blacksmith goes, well, it was made for die. So it's the sword of die. <laughs> I would, thanks, guys. Uh, originality. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was my reaction, Alex. Jesus Christ. Welcome into Anime Plus episode 44. I'm your host, Alex Light with Sparky3. Hopefully you're having a phenomenal day, whatever day you are listening or perhaps watching this podcast over at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Sparky3. Make sure to give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. We'd greatly appreciate that. Let's keep it growing. Uh, we got some we got some interesting stuff to talk about today. We, we're we're going to be breaking down Look Back Today, the one shot by Fujimoto, the creator of Chainsaw Man, uh, that did come out last week. We saved it for this episode since we didn't have any Shonen Jump uh, chapters to write. So looking forward to talking about that here in a little bit. We've got, of course, our normal our normal deal with sales numbers. We just got the newest batch for Weekly Shonen Magazine volumes, and one of them is already coming out of the gates very strong after one week. And then about, we've got some interesting news about Pokemon. That we're going to be talking about this episode. And as always, joining with me here in the studio, I got Zach here. Zach, how are you doing this wonderful Thursday? I'm doing great. I cannot complain. It's going good. Did you have a good birthday? Yeah, it was well. Awesome. Zach's about to go on vacation. you you got a tall task in front of you, don't you? Yeah, I was going to say that for our other podcast, but just on my birthday, for whatever reason, I haven't noticed that all the Assassin's Creed series was on sale. So I went, I got a week. Let's see how many of these I can cut through. This man is going on a hell of a journey. I wish you the best of luck on that. And then joining with us over the phones, we do have Josh here. Josh, how you doing? How you feeling? What What's going on today, man? How has your vacation been? How was your birthday? Uh, well, my birthday was like six months ago. No, that's not true. Um, that is true. Uh, my, vac- my vacation's going pretty well. It's already Thursday, so kind of kind of feel like it's gone by a lot. Yeah. Faster than I wanted it to. Yeah, that that's how vacations tend to go. They go by hella quick, a lot faster than you want them to go. That's the unfortunate thing about it. But uh, so first and foremost, if you could go follow us at Twitter at NMN Podcast, we'd greatly appreciate that. You guys can follow my other podcast um, at LH Gamers Podcast. We'd also appreciate that follow. And also, when it comes to lighthearted gamers, we just finished uh, celebrating our fiftieth episode. That was a very fun episode to record, uh, where we broke down fifty video games you absolutely need to play. I definitely recommend for you guys to go listen to that episode. It was an absolute blast with Zach, John, and uh, a former patron here for sparky three our tier four patron jared um was also on the show and that uh, it really was man that was an absolute blast definitely recommend to go listen to that one that you know with you know, with the, with anime plus with a lot harder gamers they're very news focused so listening to old episodes besides maybe hearing some predictions that come true later on or maybe a couple jokes you know there's not a whole lot of value i feel like listening to older episodes at least in my opinion you know because it, it, it they get dated but lighthearted uh, gamers episode 50 is one's gonna stick around for a while so i definitely recommend checking that out and lastly if you want to support us for the patreon it's a great way to do so patreon.com forward slash sparky three we'd greatly appreciate that but you know don't feel obligated to listen to the show is enough just be a friend tell a friend and yeah i guess i don't have the link set up for that that's my fault oh well yeah i'll fix it next time all right so let's jump into the news let's jump into the news what we got uh going on today all right so first up i wanted to, i wanted to shout this out because this one you know kind of kind of hits home for me a little bit i like this i like to see stuff like this um all right so the black lagoon uh creator uh ray hero uh re- revealed in a recent interview that uh depression was the cause of multiple black lagoon uh, hiatuses and the reason why i like this is because he's stepping up saying that is the reason you know you know admitting that hey you know i've had I've had some problems. You know, it originally launched in 02 in monthly Sunday GX. It had a hiatus in 14 and then resumed in, in 17, a three-year hiatus. Uh, then it had another hiatus in 18 and resumed in 19. Uh, Black Lagoon, while it's a series I've never personally checked out, and it's not, like, super, super mainstream, it's popular enough where it really has its strong cult following. Um, and it's a fun series. 
That's what I've always heard. I've always heard it's a fun series. And, you know, the main reason I wanted to shout this out is just because, like, uh, it's just a friendly reminder to take care of yourself. You know, you can, you know, take care of your mental health. Uh, know your limits. You know, thankfully, you know, he has known his limits and he's, you know, been able to take those breaks. He's, you know, stepped forward to say, hey, it's I need to I need to take a step back. And thankfully, the, the magazine that he is working with, uh, you know, have, have allowed him to do it not once, you know, not twice, but, you know, three times. Uh, yeah, no, two times. Um so, I mean, I just a special shout out to that, you know, just a friendly reminder for everyone to just uh, take care of yourself. Don't don't burn yourself out. Um, you know, know your limitations um, and, and just take breaks. That's that's the main thing there. Uh, going over from there, uh, Ronio Kenshin, the beginning releases on Netflix uh, July 30th. So by the time this episode is out, it should be on Netflix. Uh, I know Netflix now has the the latest movie already on you know, Netflix. So kind of. Kind of out of order here, you know, in terms of releases, how how they're getting them. So, you know, you can go check this out now, and then maybe you know, I I I don't I don't remember how many movies there are for Rodeo Kenshin. Uh, do you guys happen to remember off the top of your heads? I know there's no. mul- I know there's multiple. I know there's multiple. So hopefully Netflix can get the others because you know right now it's just like the last one and this one. So hopefully they can kind of get everything and fill it in up in between. But if you are interested in checking that out, that you know obviously Ronio Kenshin, the movies over in Japan are considered some of the the better live action things out there, along with like the Death Note that went on over in Japan. So definitely go check that out if you're a fan of Ronio Kenshin. Uh, last little shout out that we have here is that we did get a movie teaser for JJK movie Volume Zero. Uh, if you have not seen that yet, make sure you give it a look. Uh, that of course is coming out. December 24th of this year over in Japan and then we'll get it sometime next year looking forward to watching that when the time comes speaking of movies you know what I saw on sale the other day what's up I saw someone um, I think it was actually on Crunchyroll Crunchyroll no it was on uh, rightstuffanim.com they were selling a vinyl of the Heroes Rising soundtrack that's actually super cool that's actually super dope that's something that I might have to go look into yeah, I just thought it was odd. <laughs> so I was just like, this seems sort of late for... Kind of late to the game, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of late to the game. Still cool, though. Definitely cool. Uh, all right, so let's hop into some uh, interesting news we got going on this week. So first, let's talk about Look Back a little bit. Okay, we're going to break it down here in a little bit, give our thoughts on this one shot. This one shot, of course, being 142 pages. Again, it's by Fujimoto, the creator of Chainsaw Man. Uh, so Look Back is set to be released as a standalone volume uh, September 3rd. Okay. Um, so a couple things. Number one, very excited to see the sales numbers on this, right? That's the number one thing I, I'm going to go ahead and throw out there. But the next thing that I, it's just a question that I had, you know, seeing this and let's, let's assume that the sales numbers are going to be really, really strong, right? Okay. To kind of like a burn the witch situation while burn the witch had great content. It's by Kubo. Everyone knows and loves Kubo. So there, there's a lot of fans that want to support Kubo, right? Kind of the same thing here with the, you know, with the chainsaw man hype. Everyone loves chainsaw man. They want to support him. You know, when it comes to this, if the sales kind of blow out of the water, assume they do. Do you think that maybe this could set up for a look back movie? You know, perhaps, I mean, they, you know, this was described almost like a feature film, you know, in terms of how the pacing of the, uh, the chapter, the one shot went, do you guys see that as a possibility? Do you guys, see that maybe as getting a couple more one shots of this what, what do you what are your thoughts on this do you think it's going to simply end as this or do you think there could be more possibilities i feel like there could be a possibility of a movie i feel like in terms for that to really work out though there have to be some added content and storyboards to really I agree. flesh it out and extend it to like i think a minimum it's like 45 to 50 minutes for a film right mm-hmm. yeah because I think with just the base content that came out in the one shot, I mean, it'd be a fairly interesting story, but I wouldn't count it as like a movie of any sorts. Right. What about yeah, you? I could, uh, I, I wouldn't say movie per se, unless, you know, like a studio got their hands on it. Let's say like, you know, Studio Ghibli got their hands on it and wanted to make a movie out of it. I could probably see that a lot of Studio Ghibli movies are based off of sh- like stories like this um if anything though i could see it maybe as like a i wouldn't say a limited series but maybe something along those lines kind of like you know how burn the witch got didn't burn the witch get a, a limited series if i'm not mistaken yes yeah burn the witch essentially was like a movie split into a couple episodes mm-hmm. kind of similar to what they did with the uh digimon adventure try ones yeah. those movies they split yeah. up into four episodes a piece kind of like that yeah so I could see something like that for this. Maybe not, you know, four episodes, but maybe two. Um, just, you know, put back to back in like an hour long format or something like that to, you know, but I, I wouldn't see it 
getting a movie per se. Um, but I could definitely see more coming out of this because it did kind of blow everyone out of the water. Uh, nobody was really expecting what they got. Um, and everyone really loved it. And, you know, uh, Fujimoto got tons of praise from all kinds of uh, manga creators and everyone. So I could definitely see more stuff like this, you know, kind of popping up, just random one shots. Um, Cause you know, it, Oda's got um, monsters, which I believe Shonen Jump is putting on their YouTube channel as like a voice comic. Uh, that's going to be two episodes. So I could really see that inspiring, you know, more stuff like that, the monsters thing or like other uh, manga creators like going and creating more content like that outside of what they're normally working on. Right. And I will say, you know, I, I do think that this base premise, honestly, I do think it could be a really solid movie. But if, it, if like, let's say Shoeisha would want to take that approach, I'm with you, Zach. I think we would get a lot more, like, storyboarding. That, mm-hmm. You know, Fujimoto would come up and, you know, and get more content for the movie. Uh, I do think it could be possible. I, and I do think it could be a really good movie. I mean, just from the base story that we did get in the one shot, I think it definitely has the potential for, you know, a pretty solid flick. But I, I'm, I'm with you on the fact that we would need more content. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I could also see what Josh is saying, where it could be, like, maybe, like, a, a special limited series, like, you know, two, you know, two, three to four episodes. Um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. You know, the main thing is just, we're going to, we're going to make sure to track those sales when that comes out, see how well it's going to do. You know, if it's anything, I'm mean, like burn the witch, burn the witch, blew it out of the water for, you know, for, I, I understand that was, a, I think three chapters is I think what burn the witch was for its one volume. And it just completely just unbelievable sales. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what look back is going to do as well. Um, all right, so the next little piece of news that we got here is uh, involving Pokemon. So Pokemon, um, of course, you know, it is a video game series, yeah, but it's also an anime. But uh, Pokemon is apparently got a live-action series reportedly in development over at Netflix. Um, you know, I got to say, if, you know, you know, when, it come, when you hear this sort of stuff, you're automatically very hesitant about it, right? Okay, that's everyone's, that's everyone's automatic opinion. Um, but I will say in terms like, let's say, let's talk character models. If they do it, anything similar to what they did with detective Pikachu, I don't have a lot of worries personally, because while I had my beefs with detective Pikachu in terms of story, I I thought the Pokemon looked awesome in my opinion for live action. Um, but what are you guys' thoughts on the potential of a live action series over at Netflix for uh, Pokemon? Well, I was thinking on the same lines as you, Alex, and I was just like, you said that I went, I'm not terribly worried because we have Detective Pikachu, as you said, and like the modeling and stuff of the characters was not bad. Yes, there was some issues with the story for what it was, but I mean, it was a lot better than other live actions we get even with that story. True. So in terms of live action Pokemon, we actually have a somewhat okay success. So I'm not very terribly worried about the production modeling of itself. I'm more curious about what they would be following in terms of story. I would probably take a shot in the dark and say it's just going to be, uh, it's not really a shot in the dark. It seems like probably the most obvious thing is that it's probably just going to be like an original character or whatever doing its thing. But I, dude, I think it'd be dope if they went with the manga, followed like a manga story. I think that would be super clean. Like follow red, mm-hmm. follow blue, follow green, etc. I think that would be super cool personally. But that's me. That's my opinion. I love I love Pokemon Adventures. Pokemon Adventures is such a fun read. Uh, Josh, what's yeah. your thoughts on this? You're a big Pokemon fanatic. How you feeling about this? Yeah, I'm really on the fence about it. Like you guys said, you know, the Take the Pikachu, you know, for its flaws was a really good movie, especially a movie based off like an anime video game, manga, like for what it was, it was really good. The Pokemon models were really good. Yeah, the story was kind of lackluster, but hey, we got what we got, and I enjoyed it. True. My thing here is, uh, as far as Netflix goes, they're not really known for doing really good adaptations of things, and depending on what budget they're going to throw at it, are we going to get character models like Detective Pikachu? Are they going to be working with like Warner Brothers and Legendary um, you know, to get that kind of quality of a show? Um, that's where my worries kind of stand because, you know, a lot of the, uh, the projects Netflix is working on now, we don't really know anything about like the Yu Hakusho show live action series or the one piece live action series, or, I mean, we can go in there now and watch bleach and full metal, but you know, from what I've seen, they don't look fantastic. So I've heard full metal is me- bad. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I've heard full metal is bad. Well, that may be a little bit more worrying for Pokemon then. 
Yeah. Yeah. Odds are we're so gonna get what, a Pokemon Snap live action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what that was what worries me about Netflix getting it. On the other hand, as far as the story goes with Pokemon, there's so much content that really you can they can adapt anything, or they can just make an entirely new story, um, and it won't really affect anything. It just depends on you know what that story is and how it's gonna go. Um, more than likely, like Alex said, I could see them following like. Um, the manga and following red just because i mean if as any pokemon fan knows gen one's kind of you know the baby here and they're always going to go gen one for everything so that would be the most likely play to get people more invested into it is tap on that nostalgia of gen one um but i mean it just right now i think they're in the discussion phase anyway so nothing's like concrete but you know let's just hope that we get something worthwhile out of it, out of it, instead of something that's just a waste of time. You know, Josh, while you were talking, I just <laughs> thought of something. I was just like, you're going through all these. Alex is going about following the manga and whatnot. You're talking about following the generations. It's like, I just thought the story I need to know that every Pokemon player has always wondered. The story of one of the goddamn professors. What the hell do they do while your ass is traveling the world? Because <laughs> everyone assumes they're just going to plow town on the MC's mother. But <laughs> that's that's a fair assumption. That's a fair that assumption. Is a very, that is a very <laughs> so fair, just fair like, assumption. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> that you know that actually would be interesting. I don't know about a live action series, but I mean, yeah. Also, while it's on my while it's on my uh, my head, I don't want to lose this thought. You, uh, Josh, you mentioned uh, the Yu Hakusho series. I did see yeah. a, I did see a shot of uh, Yusuke. Looks pretty solid. I will say they they. I mean, it's not hard to mess that up. I mean, you, it's possible, but you can do it. It's not that hard. But yeah. uh, the shot that I did see, y- uh, Yusuke looked pretty solid though. I will say that the you know, costume looked great, hair looked great, everything about it. It's like okay, that's a live action Yusuke. Let's go. So. I do have hopes for the Yu Hakusho live action series because it is completely, totally in Japan. Netflix is only financing it. So, like, there anything that comes out of Japan, a- anime, manga related, it, you know, it hasn't been bad. And they're shooting at Toho Studios, which do other Godzilla movies. So, yep. you know, maybe maybe we got something there. Yeah, maybe we do. You know, Japan does do things right when it comes to live actions because I know, I, you know, we, we talked about the sales like an episode or two ago. I really want to watch Tokyo Avengers. Yeah. Oh, dude, it yeah. looks so good. I want, I'm so pumped to check that out at some point. But, I mean, we'll see what comes out of the Pokemon live action. Uh, very curious of the like, story direction, how many episodes, etc. And, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what kind of budget they got on it, like Josh said. See if they, it's got the budget to actually give us the solid-looking models that we got with Detective Pikachu. But at the same time, you know, here's the thing about Netflix, right? Doing all these live action things. We've, they've had a lot of misses, right? Let's be real. They have. Sooner or later, they're going to get a hit. It's just a matter of when and what. I mean, at this yeah. point, Netflix is in the live action pit hole, the same as DC. So fair, <laughs> fair. DC eventually got Wonder Woman, which people loved, and then they followed it up with Aquaman, which wasn't as liked, but it wasn't hated either. So right. Uh, yeah. Netflix so, will yeah. have their win. They're gonna get. They're gonna get a swing and a home run eventually. It's just a matter of what I mean, it's gonna be. Their original anime series are actually getting better. I, you know, we haven't really talked about any of it, but I really enjoyed Godzilla's singular point. So, Not you know, that. maybe, maybe there's hope that they, maybe they, they get something right. You know, I'm still holding out hope that the One Piece series is going to be decent. I have seen some of the leaked pictures and the ships actually look good, but I can't. I'm going to put money and say One Piece is going to be good. I'm going to go ahead and but I'm going to put some money on it. I, you know, I know I have, Oda has his hands on everything, every decision, every yeah. single decision has to be run by him. I'm going to put money that one piece will actually be good. That, you know, I, I'll agree with that. And, you know, what's funny is um, I was just watching Netflix a minute ago. So I have like their screensaver screen going on and The Witcher pops up and I was like, you know, The Witcher is actually a really good original Netflix series. So yeah. maybe, maybe they can do something right. Maybe they're starting to get their home runs. I mean, yeah. uh, Netflix has a lot of good original series. It's yeah, just a do. matter of fact that Witcher was the first video game adaptation series. 
Well, I take that back because Castlevania came out before Witcher. So yeah, Castlevania was their first success in a video game adaptation. Right. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how many more misses Netflix has and how many more hits. Hopefully the Pokemon's a hit. Hopefully Yu Yu shows a hit. Hopefully One Piece is a hit. We'll see. Let's hop over to Anime Talks for the week. Okay, let's talk about, let's kick things off with My Hero Academia episode 104. How are we feeling on it? Endeavor arc is uh, finally coming to a close here after, you know, we got a filler episode with, you know, filler-ish episode with the with um, Yuraka and all them, which I got to admit, that was one of those Yashihime moments for me where I'm just tapping the 10 seconds forward. Not going to lie. Didn't really care to watch it. Uh, but yeah. but uh, how are you guys feeling on 104? We've got some more, you know, main action with our trio here, working with Endeavor. And then, of course, this is uh, more of an in- a look at, uh, as the title of the episode is, the, I think, is it the Hellish to- uh, Todoroki family? I think yes. it was, yeah. The Hellish Todoroki uh, family. How, how are you guys feeling on this episode? You know, I told you yesterday that if I didn't know it was coming up in the anime after reading the manga, I would probably drop the anime at this point. Just because, I don't know, I'm getting, yeah, I, I feel like what, like I'm watching Yashihime every week because it's not really like going anywhere, but I also know what's happening. So it's like kind of boring to me because, you know, it's not like, it feels like not a new chore information because this isn't like great content kind of thing. Yeah, especially how this season in particular has gone, where the, the whole season's just been kind of slow. Um, yeah, and this episode wasn't really any different, because it was just a lot of, you know, talking about how the Todoroki family is trying to forgive Endeavor, but they're not quite sold on forgiving Endeavor, and then Deku and Bakugo just kind of bust in and, like, give their two cents on it. I love uh, that uh, awkward moment at dinner, too. I really yeah. do. I love that awkward moment because, like, even is I, I love it because even Bakugo was awkward in that moment where he's just like, "Oh, this is fucking weird, man. I don't like yeah. this." You You're know, you would expect that out of Deku, bad. but yeah. See, as the only person here who watched all of Yasuhime, this is still better than Yasuhime. That's I would imagine. Yeah. So I uh, yeah. Also, shout out to Natsu shirt. I stole that. Shout yes. out to his shirt, man. I want that shirt. <laughs> That's a fantastic shirt. That's a great A shirt. I don't know if that was in the manga. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look, but that is a phenomenal shirt, and I want it. I'm pretty sure you can buy that shirt. I would imagine. I don't imagine that's a hard shirt to find. I know you can buy a front back shirt, which it just has front on both sides. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> But uh, I mean, it, I mean, it, it was it was an enjoyable episode because it gives you more of the in the in look, you know, at how you know what things are like with that family, uh, you know, while the sister is trying so hard, you know, Natsu's having no part of this, um, and and it is interesting to see those sort of family dynamics in 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 these situations. So you know, so while it's still not um, incredible amazing content, you know, it still was entertaining uh to a point. Next episode of course, you know, we do have this this villain that has a grudge on Endeavor and takes Natsu, which is going to be the finale for the Endeavor arc and kick us off with the villain arc, which I feel like the villain arc, man, I and maybe I haven't obviously reread it, but I feel like the villain arc really got shafted with this anime scene because we don't have that many episodes left of we don't have many episodes left of the season is what I'm saying, you know. So I kind I feel like it may have got shafted a little bit, but I'm not. I can't remember yeah. the, the full arc to say for sure. It has felt long, but I, I mean, I've, based on how I remember reading it, it was dragged out a bit. So I don't feel like we were shafted too hard. And I also feel at the time of reading the manga, the arc itself was done sort of in a quick pace as well, because the opening of it was pretty slow pace but once it actually got into the main uh, crux of it and all the stuff that happens it goes by pretty quickly right they just reuse yeah. the same shots over and over okay fair it just fair. depends on how many episodes are left in the season i think this was uh episode 16 of 24 i think i could be wrong so they could do the first half of the villain arc pretty fast because that one that's the part that did take a long time and then the second part, it might. You know what? Thinking about it, it might get shafted, but it just depends on where they want to end it and where they're going to pick up the next season. That's very true. 
that that is something to look 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 at is where exactly is it going to end and where exactly yeah. is the next season going to pick up because obviously we know the war is the next season which super pumped for that it's gonna be fantastic but where exactly is this season going to end uh, I don't know, you know, and I will say I, I've been saying this all along, and I do believe this. I do think the anime is going to do the villain arc justice because the villain arc did feel very dragged out, as we have said on multiple occasions. So I do think it's going to be a, a very good watch. Uh, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see how fast paced it's going to be. Maybe the fast pacing is going to be good. You know, like I said, it did feel dragged, so maybe they they pace it really well. I don't know. Or maybe they just use the last few episodes to just animate the parts that drug out really long. Right. Yeah. Well, what about One Piece uh, 984? What do we got going over there, Josh? Well, you know, I want to start this off with kind of a rant. You want uh, the rant button? I got the rant button. It's yeah. A, it's a big ahead. it's a big red button over here. I think you just said yes. You, All right. Cool. You can hit the you can hit the rant button. You need to get an actual effect for that on video. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. So what you got? All right, so I understand that a lot of anime like to, you, you know, fluff out episodes uh, to keep the content from getting too caught up. And one of the ones that suffers the most from this is One Piece because it is ongoing, it's not seasonal, and it is very close to the manga at this point. And all these episodes do feel like they are a lot of fluff. It's a lot of, you know, what happened last episode, flashbacks, stuff like that, just getting us, you know, everyone caught up on where it's going. But something they added to this episode that really kind of annoyed me, and I'm sure it annoyed a lot of other people too, was that to fluff out this episode, they intentionally spoiled something that happens way later on that was kind of a big deal when it happened when we were reading it, I believe chapter 10, 12. Um, and that was, and it's not a spoiler at this point because Crunchyroll has confirmed it on their YouTube page, and that Zoro's Conquer Hockey. Uh, he uses it for, you know, about a second, and ultimately it's for a gag to uh, make it seem like the Animal Kingdom pirates are just too drunk, and that's why they all passed out. And then Crunchyroll goes and confirms that it was Zora's Conqueror Hockey, which in the manga doesn't happen until way later. And it was, like, kind of a big deal in the way it happened. Um, so the way they just kind of, like, threw it into this episode as fluff just was super annoying and took away from a lot that could have happened later on and a big reveal. Um, and that just really kind of didn't sit well with me only because they messed up that reveal for filler in this episode. Otherwise the episode was all right. Like I said, it was a bunch of fluff, a bunch of filler. Um, we, there was some funny moments, uh, like when Frankie was bringing out all the vehicles and Sanji was trying to jump in the tank with, uh, with Nami and Carrot, and he couldn't get in because Usopp was already in there. And there's a lot of gratuitous uh, breast shots. Uh, also, when Frankie was inviting Robin onto the motorcycle, and you think Robin's getting on, but really it's Brooke. Um, those are really funny. Uh, other than that, you know, the episode was what it was. You know, kind of getting started on the raid. Uh, there was a lot of red bean soup, which just kind of went on, was dragged out for a long time to, I guess, show you you know, the impact of them wasting all this food is going to have on Luffy, uh, which we'll find out very soon uh, in this next episode, actually. Um, other than that, it was, you know, it was an all right episode. My main beef with it, again, was the fluff. Just too much that they wanted to throw out there to fill out this episode that just really didn't need to be there and was probably better saved for later. Yeah, it definitely kind of takes away from the, the big reveal that you kind of get later on with how, how it went in the manga. So I can definitely see your frustration there. But what about, uh, what about you, Zach? How's your frustration with Dragon Quest going? Having a great time? I mean, it was an all right episode. It's about what I expected from Dragon right. Quest now. Sounds about normal. I mean, it takes up right where, from the previous episode, Hunko learns how to use um, the power of justice, breaks out of the spell that Mr. Vern has on him, only for Miss Fern to get real pissy because whatever Hunkle used showed uh, Mr. Vern's face, because he apparently has a face, that both uh, Hunkle and Ma'am uh, see. Oh, I, I almost skipped. So Hunkle does his little justice strike. Mr. Vern flies up, gets cut and everything. Ma'am and Hunkle's free. And <laughs> has a whole moment where Ma'am's now falling on the ground because she was released. 
Pinkle's standing there. He's like, I've learned how to use justice. I thank you, ma'am. I'll always remember this. And because of you, I'll never go back on the dark road. She's down on the ground, sort of blushing. He's like, oh, Hume cool. And then <laughs> Mr. Virgo pops back down. He's like, the hell did you do? And immediately shuts him down, recasts a spell on him, retraps him. <laughs> <laughs> begins to literally crush everybody with this spell to the floor. We actually have a pretty good shot of, well, brutal shot of where it literally looks like blood vessels are bursting out of all of our characters surrounding him and just has a nice little rainbow of blood mm. form over him. Okay. And then it, as it does the rainbow of blood, it goes, meanwhile, in the tower with the leaders, what's happened? It's quiet. Our seers goes, There! A shadow appears like, I found you all. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, we've been discovered. All right, we'll go back to every being suffered. Everyone continues to be crushed. Um, Mr. Vern's pissy at Hunkel because he revealed his face. Lists Hunkel to personally kill him where, shoot, this shot's pretty brutal. Um, literally shows the veins out of Hunkel pretty much about to burst out of his skin as it's twisting him, only for Die to show up and save him. Oh, Dai's damn sword. So Dai got his sword, okay? And they go, what's its name? The blacksmith goes, well, it was made for Dai. So it's the sword of Dai. <laughs> I would, thanks, guys. Uh, rigid Audi. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, that was my reaction, Alex. Jesus Christ. Um, and then it goes on the whole thing about, well, the sword has a soul. So you can't just pull it out and use whenever it chooses when it fights. But when you need it, it's going to plot device open for you. Okay, I can accept that. Uh, goes off, saves everyone, sends Mr. Vern away for a moment, only for them to go all, everyone to go. The leaders are in trouble. The giant castle is moving to go kill them. Um, we can handle him. You go save the leaders. Just like... Okay. He goes off to save the leaders. <laughs> so when they point it out to die, they go, Die's like, okay, I'll help you find him. We'll kill Mr. Vern real quick. And they're just like, no, look at that. It points and just has a shot of the castle, sort of penguin, almost penguin walking over the city towards the tower. <laughs> I just like this animation. <laughs> this whole anime just sounds like a massive acid trip. What the fuck happens every week? <laughs> I mean, it's not honestly that bad, but that's all I could picture when I saw the castle moving. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll go save them. He goes off. Then we completely ignore the fight with Mr. Vern for the rest of the episode. Um, so all the leaders are in the tower. They're cowering. They have a nice moment of, oh, no, why did I bring you all to yada, 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 unifying themselves. And while they're having this moment, the tower, the tower finally gets there. And... It just red beam a dooms over everybody and about to destroy the tower, which reminds me. So when Dai leaves off to go stop the castle from killing everyone, he goes, he tells everyone about his sword not being able to be used properly. He's like, I'll show you the power of my sword. Flies off Super Saiyan mode with his fist ready. I was like, he's going to go punch a tower and not even use a sword, isn't he? <laughs> so we get to that. Ta castle's looking at the people. It's re revving up to punch. As its fist is about to hit it, Die comes out and punches the castle like I guessed, and which I'm calling bullshit on this because no matter how strong Die is, with the momentum of a punch, that punch of the castle should have still hit the damn tower. It shouldn't have just dead stopped and knocked the castle. That sucker would have kept going, took out that tower, maybe not killed everyone, but it would have killed somebody. Um, yeah, then Die has a standoff with a freaking castle. His sword comes alive and he cuts the damn thing in half. You ever just stance up to a castle before? <laughs> you ever just stance up to a castle holding out your hand like you're in some Kabuki film? <laughs> this show sounds just like, a, like I said, a fucking acid trip every single week. Like, what the fuck is happening to this goddamn show? And when the fuck's it going to end? Like, you're, Dude, you're trapped for like forever. You poor bastard. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I get my laughs out of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, at least you get that. What about Tokyo Revengers? Did you guys get some laughs out of Mikey Streethawk? I mean, don't diss the Streethawk, man. <laughs> the Streethawk's fantastic. <laughs> Josh, how, how did you feel about the Streethawk? I mean, I like the Streethawk. It was a badass moped. <laughs> 
I don't think a badass <laughs> moped exists. But That's where you're wrong. Because there's they the street hog. Exist, and it's not the street hog. There's actually Yankee styled mopeds out there. Yankee style. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what do you guys think about this episode? Though? This episode, of course, being good old uh, flashback, uh, Cosatoro kind of backstory, kind of wh- what happened with the founding members on stuff. You know, how, how, how are you guys feeling about this episode? Really good episode for me. You know, we got to see a little bit about why Cosatoro, uh, you know, has this grudge. You know, him and ba- Baji was trying to get Mikey an actual bike because he's their leader. They want him to look cool where he's not a little bitch going around on a moped. No offense to anyone that drives mopeds out there, but in terms of this gang, when everyone else is riding bikes looking like badasses and you got the leader back here kind of skirt skirting around, yeah, you want them to be on a bike with you. You know, so yeah, yeah obviously everything kind of went wrong in this episode uh, where, the, you know, the shop they, they were breaking into, the shop owner confronts them. Turns out it's Mikey's older brother and Kazutoro kind of whack, whacked him. He's dead. Big rip. How are you guys feeling about the episode? Josh, how are you feeling about it? You know, this all being you new know, content for you. I'm glad you went to me first because I, 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 I was left with questions. Um, because as far as reasonings to, you know, have a feud with somebody, this is kind of up there with one of the dumber ones I've ever encountered. Fucking true. <laughs> because I was like, is there going to be more to this? And then towards the end, he's just like, it's Mikey's fault. Mikey's the reason I did this. And I was like, but Mikey is not the reason you did this. You did this. You you, you, you didn't have to do it. Like, uh, the dude was trying to talk you out of it the entire time. So I I was left very confused as to like, is this is this the reason that there is the feud? And uh, yeah, it was just it was just dumb the way he convinced himself that it was Mikey's fault that he did what he did. That was kind of my beef when I read the chapters, personally, is that I, I thought it was just a really stupid reason, you know, to hold that grudge. I mean, you're just uh, you're just a psychopath, clearly. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I, I'm with you. That's bottom line. I thought it was stupid. Zach, whenever you read this for the first time, did you think it was stupid? Or, do you, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I didn't think it's stupid. It's a psychological break thing. More or less, Kazutora just has a very high respect and obsession with Mikey to an extent where more or less it's just a flip of something terrible has happened. And the reason why this event happened is because he was doing something for Mikey and because he doesn't want to put the guilt and stuff on himself in a person's mind, they can have a psychological break, which turns either could turn either a respect or admiring of someone into hate and malice. And it does the flip side too, where if someone has just a bunch of hate and malice for someone, it can turn into love and admiration depending on how the psychic break happens. You know, that's fair. That's why he's on this show. He's smarter than me. That's fair. That's, that's a really good point. And something I didn't think about just because I was just too fixated on the fact that like, he was the one that went to steal the bike for Mikey. Right. He was the one that broke in. He was the one that killed Mikey's brother. And the entire time, I forgot the dude's name, is trying to talk him out of all of it. And like, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do this. Hey, yeah, Baji's like, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't steal this. This doesn't feel right. Hey, don't do what you're about to do. And then he does it. And the entire time, he's just like, it's Mikey's fault. Mikey's fault. And I was was really fixated on that. And now that you bring that up, that is a very good point that it was just kind of more of a, a, a psychological break for him. That you know, placing the blame on someone other than himself because you're right. In his mind, he was doing it for Mikey, so it's Mikey's fault that he did it in the first place. Correct. So that's why I didn't think it's dumb, just because I really went, "Oh, cool, psychological break. We're going there now." <laughs> yeah, it, that does make a lot more sense now. It does now that you put it all in perspective. Yeah, I do have one question about this episode. I wanted you guys to take on. So if I'm, if you were if you were Baji. And you were getting your shit beat in, trying to protect a moped, and then the person who owns mo- moped came and just kicked the moped down. What what side would you be on? Would you be kind of mad? It's like, dude, I just got my ass kicked for that fucking moped, and now you're just kicking out. Or would you be on the side where it's just like, bro, because of you know Mikey's stance on it? Would you be mad in that situation, or would you be like, bro, I love you? Um, I see both sides. Just because <laughs> of the whole culture of bike gangs and whatnot, I would be more on the 
bro side rather than the, the fuck you doing side. Right, yeah. right. Just because it's the whole respect of it's his leader's bike. So, yeah, you're going to put your body in front of it if you respect your leader. Unless you're scumbag and just like, yeah, fuck it, fuck it up. I don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah, and the fact that Mikey came in and kicked it, was it was more or less a sign of like, I care about you way more than I care about this bike. Let whatever ha- happened to the bike, but I would don't want it to happen to you. Right. So see, it's kind I, of one I, of those, I see like, both sides. Bro, you're so cool, man. Like it, it wasn't like a what the fuck. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I see both sides 100. percent I see the bro, I love you, but I'll see the side like, bro, I just got my shit wrecked for that fucking <laughs> moped <laughs> trying to protect yeah. it. I see both sides though. What about uh, Two Year Eternity episode 15? How you guys feeling on this one? You know, we got you know, five more episodes left and the season's done. Josh, how you feel about the kids now? Uh, you know, I could still care less about the kids. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Just because the kids have done nothing but get on my nerves this, this entire time. Even if they do something good, they're still getting on my nerves. <laughs> like, yeah, man, they help Fushi out. But at the same time, Fushi's trying to talk to this dude who just, like, took an arrow that because Fushi didn't want him to die in the first place. So Fushi's trying to talk to him, finds out, like, oh, he was only in that thing so he could get his little brother off the island. Like, oh, that's cool. And then what's-her-name fucking pops in is like, well, if you're going to talk to me more, you got to pay me. Like, fuck off. Who cares about her anyway? I mean, a lot of but, people do. I, uh, yeah, I, I, could, I can see a lot of people. I just don't, personally. These kids are annoying, and they're the whole reason they're kind of in the situation in the first place. So I did, it was very heartwarming at the end when Fushi gets March and uh, Gugu back. True. I did feel really good at that point. So I kind of let everything else slide. Shout out to the oh, man the in black that, trying to warn Fushi. Hey man, go to the boy. Get out of that yeah. form now. And yeah. Fushi's like, yeah, <laughs> just went yeah. on focusing <laughs> everyone else and then just stabbed to the chest. Yeah. Also too, this is another thing that made me really hate that girl is that, you know, Fushi had finally made it to, uh, Perona. Is that her name? No, Perona. No, Perona. Perona. He finally made it to her. And he's like finally having the conversation with her and stuff. And here, wait for the sirens. Okay. Anyway, he's finally having a conversation with her and stuff. And then the girl's just like, Hey, I got information for you. And so he's like, all right, I'll go get the information. And the information turns out to be like stupid nonsense bullshit that he had to actually do something for. That was the other thing I was like really pissed off about. It was like his entire motivation since he got to this island was to go and find her, and he finally does. And this little girl's like, "Hey." Also, can I point out in that situation for Fushi and um, Torney? Is that her name? Tonery. Tonery. In that situation, they're at this prison, right? I know it's nighttime, but just yelling and having this conversation. Did no one else hear this? I mean, odds are they uh, did, but based on how the island is set up. No one gives a damn. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> they're here. They're they're fucking in a coliseum, murdering the shit out of each other. So there's very obviously no law abiding guards or anyone to give a single fuck. Fair. That was just yeah. a thought that I, mean, I had in that situation. Because in reality, they're all like prisoners and convicts, regardless of whether they did anything. Since you know we've learned throughout this arc that even if your parents did something, you're punished for it too. True. So at, at this point, I don't see anyone actually caring. So they do actually seem to care about some things, um, like Fushi winning the tournament because he's not one of them. So, like, that's stupid. He's trying to, like, yeah, his, his plan is, like, free you guys, but I guess you guys don't know this, so whatever. Well, what about uh, what about the Spider People anime? Tsukamichi, Moonlight Fantasy, oh, Moonlit Spider Fantasy. Spider People yeah. anime. Yeah, how, how, how are we doing over there? Um, our two servants, uh, level to town. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to do it, Josh? You want me to explain it? Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to... We'll try to go through this. All right. We'll so, try, he of, says. Yeah. <laughs> I'll jump in I'm if I need to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good with names. Because, um, like, I can't remember the main character's name. I, Young I, Lord. For the last... Yeah, young. Okay, so young Lord and Mio are going for a walk when the uh, the last episode ends, and they meet a little girl. Um, and this little girl tells them about how she's trying to save her sister, uh, that she's been like kidnapped or something. 
Um, and while they're doing this, let me try to get this. Okay, so Shin's new name is now Tamo, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Wait, no, so, that's not right. Tomoe. Tomoe? Tomoe. So, yeah. I'm just going to call her Shin. Anyway. <laughs> it's, it's easier. Um, so, yeah, Shin's protecting the, the caravan when all these, like, ninjas attack, and she's just trying to beat them. She's not going, like, full strength and ends up murdering almost all of them. Um, but decides to end up taking one back. Um, so, you know, while that's happening, that's when this little girl is, like, explaining to uh, to the main character in Mio that, uh, you know, her sister was kidnapped and she would really like to get her back and stuff. And she ends up giving them a picture of what her sister looks like. And then it cuts back to, uh, to Shin bringing in the, uh, the ninja that she had caught, who, what that turns out to be a girl. Um, Zach, you want to kind of take it from here? Cause I'm getting kind of fuzzy <laughs> on some part. Okay. So I don't, I don't remember the girl, what the girl I'm glad, I'm glad you, like I, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show with Black Lagoon, you know, about mental health and stuff. Know your limits. I'm glad you knew your limits here <laughs> yeah, so we didn't have I a know, repeat of the law I situation. I know my limits. Yeah, I know my limits. Like, I know the I know the end part, but, it, you know, you got to work your way up there. So, to take it over from Josh. So, yes, Mio and the young lord were on a walk. A little girl comes up to him named Rain, Rain Uh They take her in, and she's a lost little orphan who's trying to help pay off a debt because for her sister, because her sister's been captured by this group in the city. Well, also, a group has tries to attack their carriage, gets their shit tossed by Tomoe. Tomoe takes one prisoner, and it's a little gag thing of where Tomoe's gone. I think I did well. After uh, ragdolling one, breaking all their bones, cutting two in half, yeah. and breaking the ribs of one by just hitting them with the butt of her katana. Uh, and it's just a little gag moment where She's like, that went pretty well. And it goes to the young Lawrence like, well, you killed everybody. And then you didn't even check this girl. She has knives on her. <laughs> and she's like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm going to lecture you. Then the little girl shows up and she's like, hey, I have this picture of my sister. And she's like, you, you're off the hook this time. And so everybody's just like, thank you, little girl. You've saved me. Um... Yeah, so she gives the picture to them, uh, and the picture happens to be a drawing of a person who looks exactly like the Kohai uh, girl from the Young Lord's World. Looks exactly like her, just red hair. So he more or less goes into this dark mode where he's just like, "We're gonna get her back, or we're gonna, or I'm gonna murder you both." Okay, dark. <laughs> yeah, like it goes dark hard because. It goes off from them. Mio went and ate all the corpses. Um, and she comes back and they're um, interrogating the assassin or thief girl with Tomoe's memory powers. And it has a little moment where Mio looks at her, him and goes, he looks different. This this isn't the same master. And he when he realizes he, he goes sort of happy and then everything. And he's just, after they get the memories, she's like, you two are doing this tonight and you're going to get him. And he gives her this look, and she's like, I don't like this look. <laughs> so Tomoe and uh, Mio go off to save this girl. Next day rolls around. Uh, young Lord goes to Renon, sells crap, makes a bunch of gold. Renon runs to the group that's keeping her sister captive and using her. They tell her to go steal the gold, and she feels conflicted about it because he's being super nice to her. Um, Tomoe and Mio find said sister in a prison, and she was super drugged out and mu pretty much just a corpse. They revive her, take down a door, only to be stopped by the strongest adventurer in the town, who's apparently behind all this. He's running the underground. And he insults the young lord. So they proceed to beat his face in along with all his goons, uh, yeah. destroy the base, only for the, after destroying the base, they turn to the girl and go, I was more helpful, right? No, I was more helpful. And proceed to level the town by showing off their skills to prove that they are more useful. Yeah. It was uh, pretty much like a Lord of the Rings moment where Legolas and Gimli are comparing how many they took down. And that's what they ended up doing is talking about how many they they, they took down. She's like, well, I took down three. And she's like, well, I took down more. 
And that's when they just, yeah, the level the entire town to prove, you know, which one was stronger and which one, like, yeah, was more helpful. Um, and so the sisters are reunited and both... they also break out three other people who were also captured oh, just yes. because they destroyed the building. Yeah. And, and every other building. Um, but yeah, Mio and uh, Tom Way, <laughs> you know, want praise because they, they think they did a really good job because they did exactly what they were supposed to do. <laughs> when the young master, young Lord like points out that what they did was pretty much destroy the entire town. He's like, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. And he proceeds to tie them in spider silk and shoot them out a window. Yeah. Don't like that phrase. Don't tie like, them with spider silk? Don't like hearing that. You probably wear spider silk. Yeah, I probably do. Don't like hearing it. Yeah. Though. Just like how, you know, we eat spiders when we sleep. I don't like hearing about that either. But she didn't turn into a spider. I still don't like that phrasing. Like, there's only like two episodes of spiders on it. That's enough for me. It, That's enough for me. It takes a, it's a big fat zero for me, dog. All right. How do you feel about eating zero then? Depressing. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> yes. You sure? Yeah. You're absolutely positive? Yep. I mean, she took the ship back. Yep, but everything leading up to that was depressing. Was it? Yeah. I mean, it seemed like a good cause at the time. Man, Ligma. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was a this was a sad episode. As soon as it kind of came into it, you know, getting to see Hermit's backstory and what made her to the point where she is, where she hates humans, doesn't want to be friends with humans, etc. It, it, it was depressing. So, you know, it starts off where you see like a big cannon and you see a doctor, you know, talk, which by the way, Zach pointed this out before we start recording, looks like the evil doctor from Mega Man, which I, when I first saw him in the manga, I'm just like, this motherfucker. The big ass nose. He looks the same way, man. But anyway, you know he he's setting up to hermit like they're they're building this ether cannon to fire at uh, planet Hook, I believe is what it was. Yes. Uh, you know which is going to help kind of revitalize the ether on the planet for the for the bots to like continue to live, live a great life, etc. Right. Uh, and you know she's just like, yeah, I'll help. That sounds great. You know, I get to help people, etc. Uh, so she helps him the entire time, working it out, working out the deal and shit, uh, just for whenever it comes time to fire. Cannons fired. She's like, oh, this is going to be so great. They're going to be able to live for so long, etc. And then, uh, you know, you start getting incoming signals from the planet. We're just like, hey, it's not stabilizing. This is not working, whatever, blah, blah. More ports start popping in where it's like, oh, this isn't working. This isn't working. And she's like freaking out. And all every, all the you know scientists and everything are all just kind of vibing there, not saying a word. And the planet just, boop, you know, explodes. You know, mind you, before like they did all this, you know, she's wanting to be friends with humans. She even mm-hmm. asked him, she's like, are we friends? It's like, Psh, yeah, yeah, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends, all right. And, uh, you know, once it kind of blows up, she's like in this like horrified shock and like crying and stuff, and everyone starts celebrating. It's like, all right, great job, guys. Mission success. And she's like, what? And, you know, they hate bots. They think bots are, you know, disgusting. They hate the how bots try to act as humans and stuff. They want to get rid of them all, like, fuck the bots, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And then, uh, you know, originally, the this Mega Man-looking motherfucker was originally going to, you know, just dispose uh, of Hermit. Uh, they all point the guns at Hermit. It's like, oh, well, we're going to get rid of you now. You served your purpose. Thanks for helping us get here. We only kept you here in case there was a problem. Great job. Um, and then, you know, one doctor who stepped up, like, hold, hold on now. We, we might could use her, you know, we might could still get something, get some use out of her. So they basically take her prisoner and experiment on her for two years. The next time that you get to see her, she's missing her entire lower half of her body, just kind of mounted up, whatever, you know, and it's just like, you know, she's not able to do something, whatever Mega Man looking motherfucker comes in here and tells her to smile. She get you know, her eyes are just empty as can be. She lets out a half little half smile of some sort and he starts just beating the shit out of her man this episode is depressing there's a lot of stuff that happened here man you know zach what'd you think of the episode i mean the dress room was nice (laughs) (laughs) okay i mean my statement stands (laughs) 
I mean, it, I mean, it was a good episode. You know, it was depressing to go into and watch and get everything that we got out of it. Because like, for coming into this whole arc when we have the narrator and said that this story is a sad one, this is this is that point. This is what we got to in terms of a sad story. Um, you know, but you know, it all comes you know comes happy ending and everything. You know, she kind of like gets back her her emotions at the end where. You know, Shiki just wants to be friends with everyone. She's like, I want to be friends too. It's like, yay, friendship. See, I had slight issues with that. I did too, personally. I mean, it makes sense with how the series is, with how the creator is. We saw Fairy Tale, of course, where friendship literally finished the fight with Acnologia. Um, still mad about that. But actually, I'm still mad about that with uh, Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest with the uh, Ghost Dragon Slayer. Just. Just now remembered that. Still irritated about that friendship moment. But, you know, it's expected, but I'm with you. Did have a, did have an issue with it. Yeah, okay. Well, what was you guys' favorite episode of the week? I will say... Sugamichi. Okay. Josh, what about you? Um, I'm going to go to your eternity. I'm actually going to go Eden Zero for mine. Eden Zero was uh, my favorite watch. Well, hey, Josh, you're going to go Eden's Eternity, even though you hate the kids? <laughs> I yeah, wanna... because it made me it made me feel really good when he got Mark and Goofy back. Okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. That, that's yeah. enough. That's fair. I you know, that. on a side note, I did catch up, and I did catch up with uh, how I, at that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Yes. Um, so I totally could have picked one of those, those episodes, too, because, God, <laughs> it's kind of dumb. I mean, uh, it is, but there was yeah. that dark moment. Yeah. Oh, are you, are you watching it too? I mean, I've read the series. Of... Oh, okay. So you... <laughs> I'm, I'm just still stuck on uh, Veldora coming back as a like a human and just reading manga all day. I mean, I'm like, not really surprised. He was bored as most... fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But the most powerful character in the entire universe is just like ways around to read manga all day. Kind of great. I almost said I almost used that as my favorite episode of the week since I caught up on all those. Well, you should have. You had the opportunity and yeah, you missed well, it. I know. It's already but set in stone now. Me like, Tear and Journey gave me a really good feel. And that's fair. That's, that, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's fair. It's all about how you feel. And speaking about how you feel, how do we feel about uh, Look Back? We're now jumping over to manga time. We're going to talk about the one shot by Fujimoto. So who wants to kick it off? Who wants to kick off breaking down uh, what we had out of Look Back? It was nice. I mean, you're not gonna get much from from me. I mean, it was a nice overall. I enjoyed it. Um, I really didn't grow too attached to it. I did like the sort of flip aspect of the two timelines, though. Yeah, we did get the split timelines and uh, t- towards the end of it. Uh, Josh, what about you, man? You 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 know, I imagine you're probably a pretty big fan of this. Well, you know, I uh, actually had to read some stuff to get it like a little more broken down for me because at first, you know, I really you know, I really related to it as like, you know, someone who was an artist throughout like high school and, or, you know, all my school time, um, you know, wanting to draw comics and stuff. And right. like, people being like, oh, man, you're really good. You're really good. And then like someone better comes around along and then it's like, you're not that good. So like, you know, I really, you know, got into it at that point. And then, you know, the story just kind of took off from there. And that's when I really had to start kind of looking into it more and there's a lot of parallels in this story with um dude, I'm based on the dude's name right now Fujimoto with uh Fujimoto's like actual life mm-hmm. uh, because you know he ended up going to college for like western art which is what the um the other girl went to you know went to go to college for uh he had you know several one shots and then finally got a published manga with a fire punch, which, you know, it's kind of like a parallel to shark kick. Yeah, uh, I did. I did notice. That. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, around the same time that shark kicks getting an anime is like, you know, when Chainsaw Man's getting an anime and stuff. And, uh, I, I posted this in our discord, but, um, the, uh, the whole, you know, final act, the climax of it, uh, had a lot of parallels to the uh, the arson on that uh, animation studio. I can't remember exactly what oh, it. Oh yeah, called. I remember that. Yeah, because uh, the mo- the look back was actually released 
on like the two year anniversary of that. And from what I understand, Fujimoto was close to some of the people that worked there, including one of the people that died in that fire. Um, and on top of that, the whole fire was started the same way that the act, you know, the act murderer was doing stuff. He had, you know, had a psychotic break thinking that people were plagiarizing him. And that's when he started the fire, just like the act murderer went in and, you know, started killing people because he thought they were plagiarizing him. Um, and what really kind of got me was it wasn't it wasn't like a parallel universe or like a two worlds or a different timeline or anything like that. That whole ending was more or less basically uh, it was a traumatic event uh, for the main character. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever like heard about this or read into it, and it's the first time I'm really seeing it anything. But um, usually when there is a traumatic event. Uh, when someone close to you is murdered or something really bad happens, um, a lot of the times people feel like there's something they could have done. And so they replay the event in their head thinking of like, if I had done this differently at this point, would this have happened at this point? Um, and that's pretty much what happens at the end of this is she's replaying it in her head thinking, well, if I had never gone there and, you know, actually like since put that manga panel under her door, would we ever have become friends? Would she ever come out of the house? Well, if she had never come out of the house and she never would have met me and we never would have hung out. She never would have wanted to go to college. So she, therefore she never would have been there in the first place. Um, but it just goes to show, and it's kind of a nod back to that very first uh, panel of the manga that she drew where, you know, it's kind of like the kiss where, you know, if we die and reincarnated, you know, would we ever meet that? And then it's the asteroid, like destroying the earth, like coming in for the kiss. Um, it's a direct like callback parallel to that where even in her mind like going through it trying to like do it differently where she wouldn't die she still ended up you know dying in a way um, because you know she instead of getting killed by the axe murder she was saved because she had never done long in the first place and she did karate um, so it was like a callback to that um, which is really really interesting just because you know, I've kind of known about stuff like that, but it's not really depicted a lot in media of, you know, those, you know, what if scenarios, like, you know, if I had done this differently, would they still have died? Would they have lived? And that was her, her way of coping more or less was going through that scenario of like coming in and saving her at the end. And therefore, you know, they never died. That was very beautifully put, Josh. That was very, very beautifully broken down. Well, thank you. Like I said, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And that's why, you know, I had to go and find something to kind of like break it down for me to right. uh, understand it a little better. And, you know, knowing that it's a lot of parallels to, you know, Fujimoto's life to begin with. And, you know, all these kind of like psychological bits and pieces that are, you know, kind of scattered in there. It, right. it made it even more interesting. And, you know, hearing you break it down in that capacity, like going into it, you know, I did kind of see a, little, a couple of tidbits online where it's like this is kind of a parallel to Fujimoto's life. You know, I did see some tidbits on that on like Twitter and everything. And uh, so going into it, I just, you know, that that's what something I already kind of understood. But, you know, hearing you break it down the way that you did more, it's just like it's just like kind of eye opening. It's like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, especially with the uh, whole tragic event, th you know, event thing where it's like you're looking for you know, like what you could have done differently. I get that completely. You know, as someone, yeah. you know, who's lost a parent to suicide, totally get that where you put yourself in a position of, you know, what could I have done differently, et cetera, to try to prevent that. And you go through each and every step. So you just breaking it down like that just makes me, I'm, I'm replaying the one shot in my head right now, which is like, damn, that is, that is a beautifully done one shot, even more than I already enjoyed it. And with that said, I really hope this becomes a movie. That'd be dope. I'm going to hope this thing yeah. sells out immensely. And maybe we can get some extra storyboarding, like Zach said originally, and maybe get a movie out of it. Uh, no, that was very beautifully put. I can't add anything on to that, Josh. That was fantastic. Great job. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's even more so just, be like, because of the parallels to, you know, Fujimoto's life, like, you know, you're just kind of wondering, like, is this more or less an autobiographical thing that he's pretty much, like, put into a manga to, like, you know, put his thoughts like a therapeutic way of putting his thoughts and feelings out there to like right. you know instead of like dwelling on them like because yeah we do know that you know the axe murder and the um the arson are the parallels um the main character 
is Fujimoto. I believe both characters, like their names contain his name in it. Um, it does. As I have it written down here in front of me, the main character's name is uh, Fujino. Yeah. And then the uh, the other character's name is uh, Koimoto. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Fuck. So, you know. God. Did you really yeah. not notice that? No. <laughs> How? That was literally the first thing I noticed when they said the uh, main character's name. Yeah. I actually tracked it back and went, isn't that just an off play of Fujimoto's name? Yeah. Which, you know, brings it to that deeper point is, you know, is like, because he, he, you know, from what I understand, he was close to one of the people that did die in that arson. Right. So, like, is this, like, his way of, like, coping with that and, like, you know, how he would have wanted things to go differently? Man, that's a, that's a very interesting thought. I would uh, just go out on a limb, obviously, knowing so little of the situation uh, from a personal standpoint. I would just say yes, because there's so many different ways to cope. And with everything that uh, we kind of just generally know from the situation, I would say this is definitely kind of a way to just maybe finally express those feelings that maybe he never got a chance to fully express, you know, and express it yeah. in the one way that he knows how, and that's to to draw to w- draw manga you know and that's what he does for a living that's what he loves to do i'm assuming he loves to do of course um so i would definitely say yeah that's probably a co- uh, coping mechanism and here i was thinking chainsaw man just drawing people getting ripped <laughs> i mean that could be as well i mean just yeah. taking all that anger on just that's true fictional drawings. chainsaw man could just be one giant anger release for him you know, just getting all of his frustrations out there. I mean, you never know. It's that a would fuck- explain the last, like, 20 chapters. That's fucking true. <laughs> no, really pumped up to see the sales on Look Back here in uh, in September, and hopefully they're going to do phenomenal. And maybe, like like we were saying, maybe set up for a movie. You know, this that, that would be actually really dope, and I, I think this would uh, add some extra storyboarding, yeah. and I, I think this could be a really awesome film. Um, yeah. let's hop over from there. Let's hit our sales and hit our few ratings that we have for the week. So, uh, we are going to start, uh, tracking some sales now for the, uh, for the newest bunch coming out of weekly Shonen magazine. Uh, so these sales of course are up to, uh, July 18th are these sales. And I'm also going to start tracking another series that we're not reading. I have no idea what this series is about. I just know that it does really well. Every time a new volume comes out, every time I've seen it on here and I know it's got an anime coming. So, but first and foremost, uh, let's kick things off with Tokyo Avengers volume 23 coming out of the gates with 222,000 <laughs> copies sold. A movie and anime fucking destroyed it. I know, man. That's, that's just insane. Like, obviously it doesn't, it's not doing the, the, the numbers of like a JJK or a One Piece, right? Or, you know, a Demon Slayer did, but still 220. That's what in one week, man. That's insane. That's absolutely just insane, man. Uh, next up, we do have Ace of the Diamond Part 2, Volume 27 with, with 55K. And then the new series I'm going to start tracking a couple of Cuckoos, uh, Volume 7. 50k and then Eden Zero volume 16 16k sold that feels really low for Eden Zero from what I've seen in the past uh I mean like I I, I just really feel like that's on the low end um you know I, I from what this volume is covering it is starting to cover where the stuff's starting to get real where we are right now with Poseidon uh Nero is his mm-hmm. name right so I don't know I just felt like that was on the low side we'll we'll see how it continues to go up uh over these next couple weeks um, I mean, everyone spends their money on Tokyo Avengers, man. That's that's true. That's true. That is very true. We're about to get that here in a minute too. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's do the uh, weekly Shonen Jump July volumes again. This is uh, July 18th. Is the latest update here? Black Clover Volume 29, 148k. Mission Yozakura Family Volume 9, 38k. Uh, both a Gravity Boys, not rated. Hard Boiled Cop and a Dolphin, not rated. ITLC, not rated. Undead Unluck Volume 7, 43.8k. Phantom Seer Volume 4, 25k. Me and Roboco Volume 4, 18.6k. And Lucas Samurai volume one 82.6 K. All right. Not bad. Uh, and a little new thing that I wanted to start doing here is what is the top five in Japan right now? Uh, the top five selling among volumes over there is kingdom volume 62 coming in at number one, Tokyo Avengers volume 23 coming at number two, uh, f- uh, f- uh funeral, uh, free ran volume five coming in at number three, reincarnate as a slime volume 18 at number four. Don't say mystery volume nine, at number five. And then a little in, you know, I'm, I'm only going to do the top five. But I may give a shout out to the others if they're kind of funny to me. And in this case, they are. Number six is Ace of the Diamond uh, Part 2, this latest volume. And then seven, eight, nine, and ten are all Tokyo Revengers. 
six. I think it's volumes six, seven, eight, and nine all coming in at those slots in the top ten. Uh, so, but that is the top five in Japan right now. We'll see what it's going to be next week. I know just a couple of weeks ago, I know like Record of Ragnarok was number one for like two weeks in a row. So, curious to see if Kingdom Volume sixty two will stay on that next week. But we'll see. Um, Hopping over from there, a couple little tidbits for you involving uh, Weekly Shonen Jump. So, of course, this upcoming issue that we've got is issue 35 with My Hero Academia being on the cover. This cover being focused on the new movie. Uh, for color pages, we do have Undead and Luck and High School Family that Kubo saved. Some notable things about this volume is JJK is returning in this issue. So, really excited to read that chapter this weekend. We do have um, the My Hero Academia Endeavors Mission special one shot is going to be in this chapter as well. And in terms of the lineup candy flurry is dead last and i did see a mission yoza core family is second to last i was big upsetty about that one what the fuck but hey whatever you know better not you know sales are still supporting it to stay alive as a mid-tier shonen jump series I'm still a little up- upset about that but whatever uh and then dr shown of course yeah we need kubo to step in and, and give some boost to mission yoza core family it needs it man it's such a great series but even though it's like more of like the like senior series, you know, compared to like Mashal and Undead and Luck, like Mashal and Undead and Luck are going to get animes before Mission Yoda's core family. 100%. Do you think you can cameo Kubo? Uh, I might be able to. Let me. Look. I'll. I'll take a look. I'll take a look and I'll let you know. Uh, and then, of course, with issue 35, Dr. Stone is on a break this weekend. Uh, and then the issue after that, once again, that is a double issue. This is going to be the summer issue of Shonen Jump. So the it is a group cover. Uh, but Dr. Stone will be getting the lead color pages right at the beginning of the magazine. Witch Watch will be getting color page. Sakamoto Days will be getting color page. And Bleach will be getting a color page because there will be a Bleach 20th anniversary 73-page chapter in uh, issue 36-37. Shout out to that. Uh, and we also did get the news for a weekly show on Jump issue 38 that Sakamoto Days will also be getting a color page. We got the news that he'll be, that Sakamoto Days will be getting back-to-back color pages. So not sure on the cover for issue 38. Uh, it could be Sakamoto Days. Who knows? I guess we'll see. But, uh, I'm going to bank on Dr. Stone or One Piece. I, I think Dr. Stone I think Dr. Stone is a, probably a good a good uh, pitch and it'll just come right off a break but uh, one piece is also just a safe bet as well um, with all those sales numbers broken down uh, let's uh, go ahead and hop into our, our few ratings that we've got for this week uh, so of course no weekly shonen jump stuff to rate so nope. l- let's do a couple of things we had in jump plus my hero vigilantes 106 um, seven I give it a seven what about spy mm-hmm. family 50 spy family's hitting man <laughs> Man, I know. I'll give it an 8. I give it an 8 as well. Uh, we do have the Weekly Shonen Magazine stuff, though, that we can rate for this episode. Tokyo Avengers 216. It's rough. I'm going to give it a 9 just because I'm curious. I'm going to give it a 9 for the same fucking reason. I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm very curious because like that that last page is just like, whoa, okay, what what just happened? That came out of nowhere. That came out of nowhere. So I'm really excited to see how much more that's going to play into the series. I was curious how that was going to come into play in this current arc, and now we got a hint. Yep. Um, so, uh, so I'm with you on that rating. Uh, what about Eden Zero 153? I have problems with Rebecca. <laughs> so she somehow failed at this entire task the first time. Mm-hmm. But this time, but this with just one advantage, but still the same set of circumstances, this time managed it. Her multiverse self suck. That's true. That's very true. What would you rate it? Seven. Um, I'll agree with the seven. What about two year eternity one forty seven? Kind of a little hit bit. the button. I think it was this one. What the f- is this chapter? There you go. What yeah. the hell happened? <laughs> turn it up for you. Here you go. Turn it up for you. What the f- is this chapter? Yeah, I agree. What the fuck happened? A lot happened in in a short period of time. I guess everyone's kind of flipped their shit. What the fuck did Goo Goo do? I want to know that. What the hell did? What the hell? What trouble did he get into? What the fuck's going with Itty? What's up with her? I thought she murdered March for a She's second. She's gone feral. <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and I feel like that's how we were supposed to feel about this chapter since Fushi's been off places, not looking after people. Right. Are you just going to give it the what the fuck? Do you have an actual rating? Um, What the fuck? All right. Um, 
What the fuck? I'll, I'll stick with that. Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 25. Um, I would give this one probably an eight. This was a good chapter. We did get to see uh, Hauser in this chapter, who was, he was, of course, the leader of the uh, Holy Knights of Leonis. He was the tornado dude, for anyone that doesn't remember his name. I know the Holy Knights kind of dropped off massively in the second season, where they became super irrelevant. But uh, apparently he is the uncle to Donnie, one of our new main main members here. So, kind of curious to see how the rest of this is going to play out there. Ranger Reject, uh, I believe it was chapter 23. I don't have it here on the script. Um, it was it was a good chapter. We, it looks like we got introduced to our like our actual real main antagonist who just brutally just murdered a dude uh, <laughs> on, this, on the spot the moment he's introduced. Um, Hi, my name... Yeah, basically, basically, because uh, there, there was, a, there's another foot soldier that's down here besides our foot soldier D protag. Mm-hmm. You know, he's off disguised as another character, like trying to fit in with all of the ranger cadets to try to get, you know, get some sit taken care of. But he discovers another foot soldier, and he's he's keeping her in a closet where it's like, just stay there, don't cause trouble, okay? I got shit to take care of. I'll come back for you. Well, while she was in there, another, a ranger candidate comes in, finds her. But, you know, he this ranger candidate is just like, you know, he can easily kill her. Because when she goes to attack him, she she he, like, fucks her up. Chops his arm off like a fucking badass samurai, right? And he's just like, look, I don't want to kill you. I want to end this peacefully if I can. And then the main villain just walks in and just obliterates this Excuse guy. Excuse me? Yes. This dude looks fucking creepy, too. So I'm pretty pumped up about this. I'd probably give it an eight, though. It was a good chapter. I enjoyed this. Uh, what about uh, God of High School 525? It was wholesome. In a way. In its weird way that is God of High School. <laughs> True. Fair. <laughs> I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight as well. Also, are we getting a hiatus? Because it felt like a hiatus. For God of High School? Yeah. It might be. Okay. Uh, what about Soul Leveling 160? Hmm. I'll give it an 8. Really? This chapter was fantastic. I'll give it an 8. I'll give it a 9, man. I love this chapter. So good. Dude, this fight happening right now is fucking incredible. The The, the way the chapter ended, too. Whew. Yeah, it was good. Loved it. Uh, what about Week Hero 148? Uh, Go-Go Sense is tingling. Goku sense is tingling. I love that comment whenever I read it. <laughs> that was fantastic. I'm going to give it a 7. Uh, I give it a 7 too because it's not exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting maybe a little bit more. Yeah. You know, we kind of we kind of got a little bit of a tease of what Gogo can do, but at the same time he just kind of got his face smashed in. Yes. But, uh, what about LC 122? <laughs> I'll give an 8. Favorite chapter of the week? I'd say solo leveling. So Gyo. All right. Uh, well, that does it for the show. We hit everything that we wanted to hit. Uh, boys, got anything you want to throw out there before we get out here? Because I'm kind of hungry. I want to go eat some dinner. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say, please like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever your platform allows. If you are watching this on YouTube and like what's going on, you can hit that subscribe. And if you really like what we're doing, you can hit that bell to be notified when new videos go up. And you can find that at YouTube.com slash Sparky3. Boom. Let's go. Josh, what about you? What you got? Yeah, follow us on Twitter at Animan Podcast. We don't tweet much. That's because Pokemon Unite came out. That is true. We have been very busy with Pokemon Unite. It's it's a fun game, you know. It's a, it's a fun game, easy to get into. Uh, I really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to talking about it this weekend on Lighthearted Gamers. Make sure you go check out that show. Like I said, we we just celebrated our 50th episode over there, uh, and it, it was a really good episode, man. I definitely recommend everyone to go check it out. 50 games you absolutely need to play. We're already starting planning right now for Anime Plus episode 50 that will be here and, and just few weeks really yeah. so we're starting to plan that out hopefully it's going to be an absolute banger of an episode just like our lighthearted gamers episode 50 was but hopefully you guys stayed all the way to the end we appreciate the hell out of you for that have a good one until next time guys see you bye later guys